Hi, this is David. Today we're going to have a tutorial on what they term minimalist value study. It only uses black and white for the study to create form. I'm going to use my brush adjust and I have my stylus unmarked so for everyone that uses a mouse you can use the same techniques that I'm using except use your mouse. Also, I've chosen the splatter airbrush because it's very good for optically mixing these two colors together to create form and light. Again, the purpose of this is creating form using color and light and your light and dark values. And it doesn't really matter what you make. You can make anything you want. I'm going to make these two areas out. Oh, I created a reference image first because it's easier than going over to the palette and choosing black and white on the little squares he, you know, that's down in the bottom of the uh, under your color palettes. So I have one, but just move these out of the areas so we don't need them there. Start making, uh, it can be like a tree branch. Start building this form out. I'm going to make it large enough so that we got some area to work on. And of course we're going to need a few branches coming out for it. Again, as you can see, I'm not using any of my stylus settings. I'm treating it just like a mouse. So the size I have it set at, it's going to stay the same size throughout the entire stroke and you can really make anything with this. You can make teapots, flowers, you can do people, objects, really anything that you would like. The purpose is just so that you can learn how to use form and your brain as an artist starts seeing form. This is the simplest way to see form is to see it right through uh, just using two colors. almost looks like a hand now. <laughs> That's okay. Doesn't really matter. Okay, I basically have a form here. That's black. It's pretty well flat. In the most part, right along the edges, that there's already optically blending a little form just on the edges where it blends into the gray background. <laughs> now, it lo now it looks like a... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm laughing at my own work here. It looks like a uh, some kind of bug or animal now. Okay, I'm going to choose white. I'm making myself laugh. Yeah, you know, I got. Uh, <laughs> you have to forgive me. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be really funny looking. Okay, what I'm doing here is starting to build some light surfaces to create form. Remember, color is light on a canvas. How we produce form is through value. Every color has value. It can be a light value or a dark value. So it's simply here in the minimalist form I'm only using one color in an optical fashion with a splatter brush to create form. My light source is coming from the upper right going down to the left. And let's continue. I can build form anywhere on this object that I so desire. You can change it anytime you want. Doesn't need to be the same, doesn't need to stay the same. If I want to change something in my form, I just simply have to go or don't be afraid. Uh, you're the only person going to see this anyway. Uh, remember, and also the canvas is not your enemy. The canvas is your friend, it's your buddy. It's it's working in conjunction with you to produce uh, whatever object, painting or style that you like. Like Winston Churchill learned how to paint. He was very timid of his art, of, excuse me, of his canvas. It's like his canvas was a growling bear who dared him to put anything on it until a lady friend came along one day 
So what are you doing? Uh, so she grabbed the paintbrush from him and she s dug into that paint and she splattered paint all over that surface. And Winston Churchill said after that he was never afraid of a canvas again. Uh, we all learned that. Uh, I think I'm still learning that. I can also I can be timid of a canvas. And that's one of the worst things an artist can actually do is become timid of his canvas. You know, throw that paint on there. Put some brush, brush strokes down. <laughs> Digitally we can get rid of them if we don't like them anyway. So just go for broke. As you see I'm starting to build different kinds of forms. Like I said, data doesn't have to stay the same. It, whatever you would like to build. So this is a light study, uh, value study. Uh, just the creation of form. You, you can do this with any brush, uh, any style. And if I want to make this a little bit larger, let's see, well, let's make this form here into something completely different. I'm going to build it out here, build it up here. As you see, I'm completely changing the object. don't have to stay the same. Uh, once I start building, and just, I can just go to town. I can build anything I want. And let's make it even a little bit here, deeper here. So now I've something out that's a little bit squarish in shape. If I want a little bit more roundness in shape, I just kind of start you know, filling it back out again. And let me bring it in like it's kind of a really funny looking knot deal up there. Um, come down here. Oh, and before I go on, also what you can use within your study is a gradient background. When I have one already placed, I'm going to turn off my layer 12. And now I have just revealed a, a gradient in the background. This gradient is black from the left going to the upper right to pure white. It, as you see, creates a lighting effect, which then gives you a little bit more practice. Now, and yeah, I'm just adding this form. I think since this guy is a little bit down in the shade, he shouldn't be quite so bright. You know, he's, he's falling off into the blackness. And this having the gradient background also helps with that. You can now get an area that you can kind of fade away. And if you fade away a little bit too much, uh, just add a little back. Again, you can use this with a mouse. So that's what I'm using. And the brightest areas are going to be up here on the ridge near the light source. A uh, little bit down here because the light's coming from the left to the right and it's hitting this particular object. These areas here are a little bit more in the shadows. I want this to kind of, whoops, want this to be a little like it's, y'all can see partially into what I'm doing. It's not completely black. Uh, and then again, if it gets a little bit, with this kind of study, if anything's a little bit too dark, too light, you just go back on work on it. Yeah, a little bit light up there, because you know that's where it's hitting. Maybe just a little here. Let's kind of bring out this little knotty form right there. Kind of see something, I go for it. Saw that, and I think I'm just going to make that. Let's like that's kind of sticking out. You know, little edge there got puffed up, and it's not quite. And let's connect it here. See, I want to easily connect pieces using this technique. Pretty much, this is done. I think this object here came out pretty good. I mean, there could be improvements on the lighting, taking more time with it. But following this tutorial, again, what you would do is create you a reference image, rectangle white, black, uh, if you you don't have to, but you can float your brush adjustment so it's easier to get to. 
Um, if you're using your stylus, of course, you can check these. If you're using a mouse, uh, you won't even see these here. Uh, you just increase or decrease your size. I left my opacity at the standard. Again, it's the splatter airbrush. It's under the art set. It's under airbrushes. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. It's been fun for me to create. And this again is David. It's also a Twisted Brush News Blog. And I'll catch you next time.